What is up everybody? Welcome back to another tutorial. In this one we do a lot of aesthetic stuff so our game is starting to look good little by little. Let's have a look what happens if we press play now. We have a bunch of objects. We're really clustered right now but as you can tell we have the ramps, the second type of ramp and they're being spawned randomly. So that's the first one, the second one. We have blocks, we have logs, we, all, all, we have all these kind of stuff. And the next cool thing to say is that they're all being spawned dynamically so if we just start this game hopefully I don't crash into anything just yet there's a slider right here and let's scroll down okay as you can tell in the back over there we see some despawning object and that is the cool thing so we start despawning stuff and of course in front of us oh I just died but we spawn stuff in the back over there so it's something we had to do to keep the memory low so we have a nice pooling system going on we're spawning from the pool and we're also deleting from the pool so guys, without further ado, we have all these things to do, and it's something that should be quite fast to do actually because we had a nice code base. So guys, without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so we're back inside of the level manager for this episode. Quick one, it should be not that hard to actually make things disappear as we pass them and make things appear as we get closer to them. What we'll need though is an update loop, of course, it's something we're going to be checking every single frame, so private void, update, we're going to start laying this down right here, and here is the very first condition. We're going to be looking at our current spawn Z minus camera container, we should have it here, position.z. If that is below distance before spawn, then we are pretty much due to generate another segment. And I'm using the generate segment uh, function, not the spawn segment, because we also, you know, we also want to be uh, creating a transition segment if we have to. Right. So we have this now. It's as simple as that to have the uh, the thing that spawns in front of us. Now, in terms of despawning them, I went and I did something super super easy. Amount of active segments. If that is bigger or equal to the max amount of segment on the screen, then let's go ahead and just despawn one. It's really as simple. Now we're going to be taking the segment to this bound in the list, so segment at the index amount of active segment minus one dot despound. Why does this work? This works only because when we do spawn our segments, we spawn them in a good order. So every time we spawn something, whether we, we make it manually or we get it from the pool, we always put it in front of the queue and that is why right here this is going to work. Alright, so amount of active segment at that point is minus minus because we removed one, of course. And guess what? That's actually all we needed to do. Let's have a look what it gives us in the game, if we actually play it for real this time. So, we should be seeing things disappear if I don't die like I just did. Let me go back in the beginning right here and actually have a look at the game scene from this place. Oh wait, um, I'm gonna keep on dying if I don't focus. Let's try this again. So we slide, we slide, do we have any more slides? We probably do, yeah, over there. So I'm sliding beneath that, and do we have any more? One more. Okay, I'm seeing the list move, and I'm seeing stuff spawn in the back there, as you can tell. So we have a continuous flow of objects, always spawning. And let's keep on going. We have one more over there. It's going to keep on going forever, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And if I just slide beneath this one, let's have a look on this end. As you can tell, we're actually removing them as we go. So as soon as we spawn one, we have one disappearing. And that's all we needed to do, basically. Now, let's have a look at the actual list on this side here. As you can tell, you have some that are inactive. You have some that are active. At the same time, you can only have... 15 of those active. So right now that's 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 9. I totally forgot count, but that's basically 15 right here. And the rest is just things that are stuck in the pool. So if after this one over there, we spawn, say, after this segment over here, we want to spawn a center ramp 10, it's not going to create a new one. It's going to use this one or this one or this one. You know, it's not going to create new stuff all the time. So this is being recycled every time. This way we don't have any big problem with the memory and that is what the purpose of a pool is so that's pretty cool now one thing I just noticed that is not very cool is the fact that 
uh, our modifier doesn't go up but the score does go up so we have to tell our game manager that we died or something because we don't want to be having our score going up like this all the time now slight change it it's totally out of the picture it doesn't make any sense in this episode but we it kind of bothers me so we have to fix it real quick um, okay so here we have the mobile if the game is started then we go ahead and we update this now if we're dead we must not update this so let's actually add a public property so, uh, public pool is dead set get by default this is false now let's go back into a bit here if the game is started and we're not dead then we go ahead and we update this now um, back on the player motor real quick we have the function called crash inside of here we'll do a game manager instance is dead oops is dead is now equal to true this way we don't have this problem anymore and that was the easiest fix we had to do this time right so the next part of this tutorial is gonna be all about spawning the actual aesthetic behind it. it's gonna be all about spawning the actual real object beneath the colliders so let's have a look currently at what we have. So if we head back at the beginning, um, we have this. This is a segment. And if we open this up, under segment, we have game object set active. That is only for all the pieces spawner. But now we have to go a little bit deeper and dig for the pieces themselves. So what we'll do is simply this for int i. Let's actually get a automatic loop. So for double tap on tab. Oops. For int i is equal to 0, as long as i is smaller than pieces.length, then we're going to go ahead and say pieces, oops, pieces, add the index i, dot spawn. Can we actually do that? Doesn't seem to be public for some reason. Why is that not public? Oh, we don't actually have that function just yet. Oh, no, never mind. I actually did an error right here. Okay, so my bad. We actually, we've done the segment script before changing over to the pieces spawner. So what we have to do is change all of these, these pieces you see here. We're going to change them for type of piece spawner instead. So here and there. Now we do have access to the function spawn. And that is all we have to do right here. It's on a single line. Same exact thing for the spawn, of course. We're going to be calling the spawn instead. And it should be as simple as that, so the whole the long episode we've did about creating this whole system paid off because in the end we have this thing now. And as you can tell, the objects are there, the vanity objects are there. They're being stacked though, that is that is quite normal. And one problem I see is that we're always spawning the same one right now. But as you can tell, at least it's spawning the objects beneath it. Now, we are going to go ahead and go under the level manager once more. And I just realized that I'm going to turn the um, this right here, the private cons boolean, into a public boolean itself. It's not going to be a cons boolean, but I feel like I'll leave it uh, in all caps because it's something that you know is not going to be there in the final build. In fact, when I create something that I might forget in the future, that something that might not be in the final build, I like to put in comment something like dollar dollar sign next to it. So when I'm like ready to publish a game everything I do like every every time I'm ready to publish something I always do a control shift F and I look for the double dollar sign and if it finds one in my project it means I have to remove this before I push so I'm just gonna put it there and that is pretty much it so using this here I'll create some kind of logic around um, whether we are going to show the colliders or hide the colliders when the game starts and that logic should be actually quite simple. If we head over to segment, we are going to go under, say, we have an awake right here. I'd like to do it in the start instead. Let's do it in the start. So private void start. And inside of that start, if level manager instance show collider, again, I'll put the double dollar sign so I don't forget. If we are showing the colliders, then let's go ahead and um, for every single one of those pieces, so for int i is equal to 0 as long as i is smaller than pieces.length then we do i++ plus plus. then inside of here let's do another for each I know that's a little bit confusing but we have to go get the mesh renderer so for each mesh renderer mr 
in pieces, add index i, get components with an s in children, so get components like this with an s in children, getting all the mesh renderer. So for every single one of those mesh renderer, let's go and say mr enabled is equal to huh. Never mind, let's take this and put it down here instead. That would make a little bit more sense. There we go, plus it remove one loop. So at the beginning when we start, we're going to say, well, your mesh are going to your mesh render are going to be enabled only if Shukolider is on. Now remember that this is only for the pieces spawner object, which is the collider and also the def collider. And uh, we're only removing the visual, so the collider are still going to be there, they're still going to be quite active. Let's press play. They're currently active. If we go in level manager and put that on off, they should be inactive. Oh, so we have some kind of issue right here. We're going to have to fix that. So what is going on exactly? All right, so I just realized something. If we take these and we actually put them inside of the awake instead, it is going to work simply because um, over here in the level manager, what we do is we create those and we generate a segment in the start. So there is chances that the level manager over here, it actually runs first and then we head over to the segment and then it runs the start of the segment, the one we just removed after. If that happens, it means the objects are already going to be inside of the segment and then we're going to turn them off. So if we do that in the awake instead, we don't get that problem, which is what I just did right here. And if we head over in the game now, press play, we should see only the object, the colliders are still there. Let's see, are the colliders still there? Yep, they are. As you can tell, we can see all of this. Now, okay, so that's our game right now. Of course, the lighting is kind of really bad, actually. We have a lot of things to work on, but we have the proper mesh showing, and this is our game right now. The camera angle is definitely not something we want. These segments are too clustered. Again, a lot of work to do, but, oh, even this thing. We have to fix this thing as well. Uh, but those are all things we're going to be doing eventually. I'm quickly just going to um, change the sun position so we have an actual lighting working on everything. Let's put that straight down for the moment. See if it's a little bit better. Hmm, not really. So we're, we're going to need another lighting solution. But um, as you can tell, we have a lot of things to work on. But we did something quite cool today. We just enable our meshes. Now the next step I'd like to take today before we end this episode is to actually make them random because right now it's always using the same exact prefab. We don't want that. We have to. We want to be having something that looks for different prefab every time. So I think we have to go instead of a P spawner for that. I believe we have to go right here and change this number. All right. So this one is kind of weird because what we have to do at this point is look up um, how many different pieces we have for every single type. So. I'm looking for the proper way to do this. Maybe you want to be doing it inside of get pieces instead. It would be a little bit easier uh, because this script right here, level manager, now knows how many different there is. But it would also mess up this thing here. So I'm not quite sure how to tackle this problem at the moment. Um, I feel like we could simply go back into piece spanner and just hard code something very long. And I think that's also going to be the solution I'll go for at the moment. So if I go ahead and say um, int amount objects, something like that, I'll make it equal to zero at first and then we'll do a switch on the type. So if it's a type, uh, if the type is say case piece type the jump, then there is amount object is going to be equal to level major dot instance jumps dot count and we just go on like this so we're going to create other cases for everything that's jump that's slide that's long blocks right here and those are what's the missing one oh ramps now with this piece of code we know how many object there is maximum and that's it. Okay, so we have only, say we only have one object, we have to say it is a random.range in between zero and the count 
of the object. So the count of the object would be one in that case. Um, let's go ahead and say amount object minus one. I believe this should work. I'm not 100% sure. We're going to give it a try, see if we have different long blocks and also different ramps. Seems like they're all the same. Are they all the same? Yep, they look all the same. Let's go ahead and change that again. We're going to say amount of objects instead. And now press play. And we have different type of object. That is quite cool. So we have a lot of different objects. Nice. And if we just go on them, as you can tell, it works. I haven't really tested out the death yet. Do we die? Yeah, we do die. So guys, this is exactly where I'm going to be ending today's episode. We've did a lot of things. It looks a lot better. We now have continuous spawning. We have despawning. We have real aesthetic object in the scene. Um, I'm not quite sure where next step is going to take us. Maybe we want to be doing a little bit of polishing, creating an actual ground, maybe creating a snow trail behind the player. That could be cool. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. Check out the next video to actually keep on moving forward. And um, check out the Patreon page. Check out the, the Discord. We're quite active there. Facebook page to keep some updates. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.